Hi, and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I would like to talk about lenses, in particular the concave and the convex lens, and how they create virtual images, and to see why they do the things that they do. And so what I have here is a picture of Albert Einstein. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what happens when I use a convex lens and a concave lens to the image you see through the lens. And then I'm going to explain to you why that is the case. So here I have a convex lens. And as you can see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the lens around. And you might see that the image is enlarged. And so if I move it up and down, you can see the amount of magnification changes. Now, if I do the same thing with a concave lens, which looks a little bit different. So the convex lens actually is thicker in the center and thinner at the edges. The concave lens is the opposite. It is thinner in the center and it is thicker at the edges. And as I move this one around, you can see the effect is different. So rather than enlarging the image, the actual image gets smaller. And again, the amount of the size of the virtual image that you see varies depending on the fact of how far I'm away from my subject. So why is that the case? Why is it that a convex and a concave lens does those things? Well, let me explain to you. So here is a side view of a lens, a convergent lens. So before we go on to see why a virtual image is enlarged, let's quickly review some of the physics of the lens. So you know that a, light, a lens like this converges light rays. So if I have a light ray that is pa running parallel over here, and therefore it hits the side here, it's going to refract. And of course, it's going to refract twice, once as it enters the medium, once as it leaves the medium. But because of the fact that these angles are different to the either side, what's going to happen, of course, is that the light ray is going to continue to bend to a particular position like so. Similarly, if I take a light ray on the other side that's parallel to the first one, it's, it's also going to refract. It's going to refract towards the normal and then away from the normal. But again, it's going to refract in such a way that it's going to do this. And so what we say is that these light rays are converging to a point. Now, this point has a particular name and you should know this, and it's called the focal point. And the distance from here to here is called the focal length. So as long as the light rays here are parallel, all light rays are hitting a symmetrical convergent lens or convex lens will focus to a point. And if you've ever played with the magnifying the glass out in the sunshine, you know you can burn a piece of paper or wood by simply concentrating the light into a particular point. You are actually finding the focal point. So that's how what happens there. So let's now use that basis to help us also understand why we can enlarge images. So here I have my image over here, or my object, and then I'm going to enlarge that. And what we're going to do is we're going to only look at one particular light ray that is coming off this because we're going to place our eye on the center line uh, so that it helps us understand why we see a virtual image. And so the bottom of the arrow here, the light from the bottom is actually hitting right down the center line. It doesn't refract. So therefore, the bottom of the actual arrow will be seen by my eye. But where will I see the top of the arrow? Now, of course, my light ray is coming off in all different directions, but we are only interested in the one that hits uh, this uh, uh, eye. So, for example, the light ray that is coming horizontal over here might actually refract and actually bypass my eye. But we're interested in a particular light ray that is actually hitting my eye. So let's say this particular light ray over here is coming off at that angle and then when it refracts based on my position of the eye that happens to hit my eye here now like i said that all depends on the position of my eye so you might actually have a different light ray but obviously we're interested in the one that actually hits my eye but now what's really important of course is that i am now getting a light ray from the top of my arrow and my eye 
is seeing it from along this path. But because our brain interprets light traveling in straight lines, that light ray is actually going up like so. And so what happens now is that I now get a virtual image that sits behind my object. So what I actually see is an enlarged version of the real object, although the light itself is traveling here and bending, my eyes interpret it to be traveling in a straight line. And therefore, I get what we call a virtual image. A virtual image is one that cannot be projected on a surface. So this doesn't actually really exist. But nonetheless, it's what I perceive to be there. And you can see that is enlarged. Now, what determines how big this is? Well, it's determined by obviously the size of my object in the first place. But really important also is what is the features of the lens. In other words, what is the refractive index of the material? Uh, what is the curvature? Where is the focal length, in other words? And of course, where is the position of the object in relation to the lens? That also affects the size. And that's why when you move a lens up and down, the size of magnification changes. But what about a concave lens? So here's my concave lens. And again, remind ourselves of what happens when light hits it. So here's my light beam that is traveling horizontally. It, of course, bends towards the normal over here and then continues to bend outward because of bending away from the normal. And similarly speaking, this side over here, it does the same thing. We have it bending towards the normal, then bending away from the normal. And so the light rays are actually not coming to a particular point. It, it is diverging, and that's why we call a concave lens a diverging lens. So what happens with actually the production of a virtual image? So here's my object that I'm looking at. And we're going to put, again, we're going to place our eye on the horizontal line so that the light ray that is passing through the lens at this line will hit our eye directly in line because it's striking at the normal, it doesn't bend either part of the surfaces over here. So in other words, I will see the base of my object here along this line. But what about the top of my arrow? Now again, we have light rays going in all different directions. But we're interested in the one that bends in such a way that it hits my eye. And so the one I'm, I'm interested in may be this light ray. So this light ray is coming down here. It's bending in such a way that's towards the normal. And then of course, over here, it's bending towards my eye. But now what is happening is, is that this light ray is coming down like so. But because of the way I see, again, because of the fact that I am seeing in a straight line, I might find that the actual image sits over here. And so I get well, I get a virtual image that sits in front of the real object, but it is now smaller than the actual object that I'm looking at. So it appears smaller. Now, where this is, and how big it is, is all determined by the fact is, well, where is my eye in relation to this? Where is the object in relation to the lens? So those are factors that affect where the position of this particular virtual image is. Uh, also, of course, how what the curvature of my concave lens is will also affect it. But nonetheless, it appears smaller because it divert the light is spread out. And so as a result, um, I get a virtual image that is smaller than my object. Again, this is not a real image. It actually is only a perception that you have. And that's why we call it a virtual image. I hope that gives you an understanding of a convex and a concave lens and how that produces two different types of virtual images. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.